family from Church on the Square and my other family and friends. Um, I was a little nervous to begin with. Now I'm a lot of nervous. <laughs> um, first of all, we, I'm going to, I'd like to start with the prayer since that's what we were discussing in Bible study today, that if you're afraid, that you should pray. So I'm going to open with a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much that today is my day to be reborn. And I pray that you're with my children and my family today as they are dealing with this accident and that I am trusting them and lifting them up to you, Lord, that you will take care of them. Lord, I pray that my, my words reach someone today, that they will see the light that has been in my heart now and that they would consider coming to you, Lord. I ask the singer's son's name. Amen. <clears throat> well, I picked that song because um, it just really hit me because when I was dealing, starting to start with this um, testimony, I found out that I've really been quite alone all my life. I've been very lonely. And um, <clears throat> I was born into a Catholic church. <clears throat> Excuse me. I was born in a Catholic family and was baptized at a very young age, needless to say. And so I knew God, and I always believed in God. Um, God was all around me as a Catholic child. Um, there were rosaries and rosary beads and crucifixes and lots of um, time in church. And not only that, I went to a uh, Catholic school as a young adult, young child, and that was a very harsh um, environment. The nuns there was not very much love given by the nuns, and um, I often my mom got sick when I during that time, and I often went to school unprepared, and um, I would be punished. I would get hit. I would get humiliated in front of people, my other students, or I was sent to the convent to do chores. <laughs> so I was afraid of the nuns. I was afraid to tell my parents that I was in trouble again at school, and I was afraid of God. Um, I didn't find him as a loving God. I didn't feel any comfort, even though, um, like I said, God was all around me. And then when I was 11, my mom passed away. And I was the youngest of all of my siblings, and they were off doing their own thing, and um, it was lonely. I was alone home. We all dealt with our grief differently. We never spoke of my mother after that. So as an 11-year-old child, I felt alone. And I mean, I still went to church, and um, I still prayed, but I did feel very alone. So when I turned 15, I met this boy, and he just seemed so mature and together. He was 16. He had a car. He had a job. He had money. He took care of me. He loved me. And um, so I married him, and um, for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> but I did marry him. And when we got married, um, <clears throat> he had no interest in being Catholic, and I certainly was ready to be done with Catholic church, and so we church shopped, and we landed at a Baptist church, mostly because the minister was young and cool, and um, we did some marriage classes, and um, <clears throat> we got baptized together, and again, I never even opened a Bible, but it just seemed like the right thing to do at the time. So it wasn't long after that. My husband stopped going to church. Um, but I continued. I went to church. I had three children. I dressed them all up and go to church with, make them come to church with me. And I thought I was doing what was expected of me. Um, <clears throat> the marriage was not a happy marriage. And um, then you throw in a child that has addiction. 
so um, that unhappy marriage soon turned into um, a very dysfunctional marriage. A lot of yelling, a lot of ignoring my other children because I was addicted to Eric as much as he was addicted to drugs. I was his mom and I was supposed to take care of him and fix him. And so I was in, con I never, I prayed to God, but God wasn't answering my prayers. So I figured it was up to me to handle everything, everything that went wrong in my life. So um, I did, I spent a lot of um, time in therapy, um, Al-Anon groups, self-help groups, tough love groups, a lot of self-help books, <laughs> but not any energy toward God and forming a relationship with him. So fast forward many years, um, about three years ago, I met this gentleman named Vince. And before that, I was just on autopilot, just putting out fires everywhere and um, trying to get by. And Vince came into my life and he was just that. He was a very gentle man and a very God-loving man. And he expressed his love for God so purely and beautiful. He would cry. He would cry whenever he talked of how God saved him. One night, one of our dates, he told me that I wasn't gonna go to heaven. He said, Carol, you're not going to heaven. <laughs> and I'm like, what? I'm a good person, I go to church, um, I follow the Ten Commandments, I do a lot of good things out in the community. What do you mean I'm not going to heaven? And anybody that knows Vince would be like, yep, you're not going. <laughs> you gotta get a personal relationship with God. And I'm like, okay, well, I don't know what that means, but all right, Show, help me do that. So I started to go to church on the square and um, he told me to dust off my Bible and to start reading it, so I did. It didn't really make too much sense to me, but I did. And I just could feel a change in me. Every message, every Sunday would make me go home crying, that I felt like he was just talking right to me. That message was meant for me. And unfortunately, Vince passed away after nine months. And um, I had heard about this ladies group up here at Outlet Community Church. And I thought, okay, I'll do that. I'll see what that's about. And I came here as a pretty broken person. And um, again, didn't really understand the Bible. I would come to the meetings and we'd get this assignment and I would do it at home and I'd come and you know, people would explain it to me. <laughs> I started to learn what the word means, and um, I loved coming every week. It, I was hungry for all that knowledge that I was getting. And um, it was just not only learning the scripture, it was just watching these other women and their um, testimony to God and how they lived, and they still had issues and they still had problems, but they, they were still full of joy and um, a calmness, and I wanted that. So um, I, every Tuesday I would go and I'd hear about, how about that message from Pastor Sky? <laughs> Wasn't that just something? So I thought, okay, next step, I guess I gotta come to church and see what's going on here. And um, so I started attending here and did a discipleship with Pastor Sky, and we worked a long time on trust. Um, he had his work cut up for him, because I, I had no trust in God. I felt like he has just really deserted me, um, that he was never there for me, he didn't answer my prayers, and that I was just filled with anxiety and worry, and I just was angry and depressed and felt alone again. So it took a long time. He even gave me flashcards <laughs> on trust. And um, 
and I read them. Uh, but it took a long time for me to believe that God loved me, that he loved me no matter all those feelings that I had of myself, of unworthiness, was lies. They were lies from the devil, that he wanted me not to get a relationship with God. He wanted me to believe all these things because God didn't feel that I was unworthy or unlovable. It took a long time, and I think this was my turning point, was when I stopped thinking about God as this entity in the sky. I grew up thinking that, <clears throat> that um, my job down here was to just be a good person. And when I got died and went to heaven, I would finally get to meet God and then find out if I was going there or not. And um, I never heard of a personal relationship. And so that is trust, trusting God and believing that he is taking care of you and he will take care of you. So once I started thinking of him as a father figure instead of this entity in the sky, my whole thought process changed. I thought, oh, he does love me, and he loves me unconditionally, and he's going to take care of me like my dad did. He's going to provide for me. He's going to um, be patient with me and forgiving when I do things wrong. Anything that a, a, a parent would do. And once I started thinking about him as a father, um, it was easier to have that relationship. I started talking to him all day long <laughs> and thanking him or asking him to help me. And people all along would say to me that I was a strong person with all these issues and struggles I had in my life, but I wasn't strong. That was just God holding me up. He has been providing for me my whole life, even though I didn't realize it. So I started to surrender some of my worries to him, little by little. And I would see that I was okay. Maybe it didn't work out good, but I was starting to get that peace and that comfort and <clears throat> just this peace that is beyond all understanding. And I knew I wasn't alone anymore. I knew I had somebody that was there taking care of me and that no matter what happened, yeah, it's easy to pray his will, but to really accept that what his will is may not be what you want um, is, not, is a difficult thing to do. And the more I trusted him, the more I was able to do that. And life has thrown a lot of curveballs at me as today. <coughs> But I am praying that um, God is watching over my family, and um, it will be okay. So right now, God's been doing lots of things in my life. Um, for years, I have held um, a position at, for a support group for grief for families that have lost someone through addiction. And lately, it's been, I don't know, I've been just. I just been dissatisfied with the way it's been going. And um, this thought came into my mind, which I know it's not my thought because it would never, I would never think this, but that maybe I should do a Bible based grief group. So um, I've taken steps toward that. I've been doing research and um, I see that taking place in the near future that I will. Um, start to facilitate that. And I really don't have any issues on arranging meetings or talking grief, because I've had a lot of grief in my life. But it, putting the Bible into it is a concern, <laughs> but I'm trusting God that he's going to help me through that. Um, and also, while I was doing this planning and thinking and researching, another voice came into my head that said, well, you better get baptized first, Carol. 
And I, again, it's not something I would have thought of, so I know it's God speaking to me. So I'm here to get baptized, and, um, <clears throat> and I no longer feel alone, and I'm just grateful for that. Um, one other thing that God's been doing in my life is um, I've been on an antidepressant since 1997. Pretty large dose. And I've tried to get off of it for many years, couple, t many times I've tried to wean it or just not to take it, and that never worked because I would always get tearful and melancholy. But I have been not taking, I've been off of it now for a couple weeks completely after I weaned myself off of it. And so I no longer need that because I feel like um, I've got God now, so I don't need to have a pill. <laughs> So that's my story. <laughs> so we just have a couple questions for you here. So you said that you were keeping the Ten Commandments, and you were doing really good I at was. it, huh? <laughs> I was. I thought. <laughs> 